very good morning students i am r vanita assistant professor department of triple rmd engineering college so in today's session we are going to start unit 2 that is planning so as i told you in this unit we are going to see nature of planning importance and purpose of planning process steps in planning and planning premises types of plans objectives decision making and we are going to see types of planning a hierarchy of plans so these are the things we are going to see so first i'm going to say what is meant by planning so the definition for planning planning is also called as forethought so planning is the process of thinking about and organizing the activities required to achieve a desired goal so if you are starting a company means it is obvious that you will be having a goal you'll be having a desired goal so in order to achieve that planning is important so planning is a process of thinking about and organizing the activities required to achieve a desired goal if you don't have a daily objective listen carefully if you don't have a daily objective you qual you, you qualify as a dreamer this is said by ziegler so next one hamster ha harley says planning is decided sorry planning is deciding in advance what is to what is to be done okay so planning why you are planning why you are going in order to obtain your goal you have to plan in in which path you are moving and what is your objective and what is your policy what is the procedure you are going to follow if suppose if the procedure is failing or if the program is failing means what is an alternative so everything has to be planned so that's what mr harley says planning is a deciding in advance what is to be done it involves the selection of objectives policies procedures and programs from alternatives okay so mr allen says planning is a trap laid down to capture the future yeah it's an apt definition planning is a trap okay it's a lay down to capture the future so it is said by allen one more definition is given by basil which is nothing but if you don't know where you are going how can you expect to get there yeah it's obviously so you must know in which path you are moving and you must know where you are going if you fail to know that you can't you can you can't uh, reach the position which you dreamt okay so these are the four important definitions of planning now nature or nature i can say it is a nature or i can say features or i can say characteristics so let us discuss the characteristics of planning so what are all the characteristics of planning you must know first one first characteristics is planning is goal oriented planning is goal oriented obvious so why you are planning you are going to obtain the success in the company which you have started so planning is a goal oriented so plans are made in order to say the certain predetermined goals okay plans are made in order to seek certain predetermined goals the second characteristic is nothing but planning is a primary function so simply speaking planning is the basement for your success so that's what it is stated that planning is a primary function planning provides the basic foundation from which all the future management function arise okay so planning is a thinking process that is also a characteristics so if you want to plan something you have to think it and you have to narrate it and you have to provide a path for your plan thereby you can reach your success so planning is a thinking process so it involves imagination foresight and sound judgment you must be in a position to judge Away, whether you are moving in a right path, whether I can able to reach the success or not, so you must be in a position to judge yourself and your goals and your plan, your path, your foundation, everything. Then only you can reach the success. So next important feature, next important characteristic is nothing but planning is flexible. Yeah, of course you are planning something, you are putting the flow chart for your work. If any step. is failing means you can move to the once again you can start your uh, replan reconstruct you can reconstruct your plan uh, for your success 
or you can modify your plan. So planning is flexible. Next is next characteristic is planning is all pervasive. So planning is an ongoing activity at all the levels of an organized organizational hierarchy, right from CEO to first line manager. So planning is all pervasive. So next one, planning is a continuous process. So planning is not the thing that one day you're putting the plan and just like that you are doing it is not at all like that. It is a continuous process. Then only you'll be reaching your success. So planning involves the continuous assessment and the reassessment of the resources, directions, opportunities, and the problems of the organization while converting them to achieve the goals. So you must be in a position and you must have the capacity, capability in order to make your plan to, you have to convert your plan to goal. That is, you have to convert your plan to achievement for your goal. That, like that, our plan must be there. So as I told you, planning is flexible only. But since the planning is flexible, you can't, uh, just like that, it is not take it for granted that you can change your plan always. That is also not at all fine. You have to uh, frame your plan. You have to execute that. If you find any difficulty, you can reconstruct that according to your goal achievement. So next tip, characteristic is planning involves choice. Yeah, it is obvious. Planning involves choice. So planning always involves a choice among the various alternatives. So if there is only one way of doing something, there is no need of planning. Planning arises only uh, when there are alternatives available. So what is the planning? I'm going to uh, provide a path in order to achieve. What are the steps I'm going to follow in order to achieve my goal? I have, I have some plans. What is the meaning of plans? It is obvious that if this plan is failing, I I'll be having an alternative. So it is a choice based. Okay. So next one, planning is rational. So planners uh, should be objective and uh, unemotional in their approach to planning. They should not be emotional. They must be unemotional. So aim would be to achieve the efficiency and effectiveness while optimally deploying the resources. So there is no place for the emotion here and you must have an objective in order to approach your plan. Next. Next characteristic is <laughs> planning is an integrated process. So plans are uh, structured in a logical way such that every lower level plan serves as means to accomplish higher level plans. So simply speaking, many lower level plans will accomplish higher level plans. All the lower level plans joined together will provide you a good structure thereby you can accomplish your higher level plans. Plans are interrelated, interdependent and mutually supportive. That you must know. Okay. So, so these are all uh, very important characteristics of your planning at class. So what is the next characteristic is uh, planning is futuristic. Yeah, it is future based. Why you are planning? Planning attempts to peep, peep, your, peep into the future, analysis it and prepare for it. So it is futuristic. So before moving to importance and importance of planning. So what are the characteristics of planning? Planning is goal oriented. It is a primary function. Planning is a thinking process. Planning is flexible. It is, uh, it is all uh, pervasive. It is a continuous process. It is a choice based. It is rational. It is an integrated process and it is futuristic. So these are all the characteristics of planning. Okay, these are all the characteristics of planning. What is the importance and uh, uh, what is the importance and the purpose of planning? We are going to see that now. One second. Okay, as you know. So importance and purpose of planning. So what is the importance of it? So first of all, planning provides direction. That is the purpose of, that is the main purpose of planning. 
planning provides direction. If you plan only, you will be having a clear idea that in which direction you have to move and what is an activity you are going to perform for the success of your organization, thereby you can achieve your goal. So planning provides a clear sense of direction and purpose of the activities of an organization. So next uh, purpose is uh, planning minimizes the risk and uncertainty. Planning minimizes the risk and uncertainty. So in fast changing organization, uh, organization planning based on hard facts and data help managers to reduce the risk and uncertainties. Main thing is you can minimize the risk whenever you are putting the proper plan. So next the purpose is planning ensures coordination. So planning helps to establish coordinated efforts from various divisions, departments and people. So whenever you are putting the proper, proper plan, so coordination will be improved. It may be between the people or between the department or between the various divisions. So next the purpose is planning leads to economy. So planning helps to accomplish an optimal utilization of physical and human resources leading towards cost reduction, higher efficiency and productivity which lead to better economy. It is always guys whenever your plan is proper HR will be better. So cost reduction uh, will be better. Efficiency of the company will be improvised so that the productivity will be improvised. Whenever there is an increase in the productivity, it is obvious that there will be a better economy. It is obvious. Next one. Planning facilitates decision making. Yeah. So planning, whenever you are putting the proper plan, planning helps in providing the guidelines and thus facilitate decision making. So your decision uh, making will become better whenever you are putting the proper plan. Next one. Planning reduces the overlapping and wastage of efforts. So planning avoids the duplication of efforts and overlapping of the task and responsibilities and reducing the wastage of time. Yes. So whenever you are, uh, your plan is proper, time management will be better. You can save that time and uh, you will become a time bounded person and there won't be any duplication of efforts or any overlapping of Next uh, important purpose is planning encourages innovation and creativity. So it encourages innovation and creativity. So planning helps to remain competitive. Innovation and creativity are like trump cards in competitive world. So innovation, whenever uh, there is an innovation and creativity in your business or in your company or it may be in an IT company, in any concern, or any uh, institution or in any company, it is a trump card. Because whenever there is an innovation and creativity, it is obvious that your company will be very attractive. And whenever it is very attractive, it can secure the good position in this competitive world. So next the purpose is planning facilitates control. Control is a key to success of any organization. And in order to control, there has to be a plan. Control will be better in all the aspects. Planning improves morale. If employees participate in the planning process, it boosts their morale and develops a broad mentality and thinking, thinking in order to achieve their organizational goals. So all the employees has to participate in the planning process. That is the best suggestion then only they will be having a broad mentality and the thinking in order to secure or in order to achieve their goals. So the students, so what generally we, I'm saying that planning is necessary. So what is the purpose of planning? Planning provides direction. We can uh, minimize the risk and coordination will become better. Economy can be improvised. Decision making will become better. And you can save the time and obvious it encourages the innovation and creativity and planning facilitates control planning improves moral so for these purpose only we are planning the planning uh, the planning process has been implemented so as of now we have completed the characteristics of planning and purpose of planning any doubt as of now 
Shall I proceed to steps in planning work? You can put your answers in the chat box. Any doubt? Shall I proceed? Dear student, shall I proceed? Any doubt as of now? Dear students, any doubt as of now? Shall I proceed? No doubts, Rupika. Thank you, ma'am. Thanks for your response. It's okay. Now, I'm moving on to the next topic, that is steps in planning. So, till now, I told you that what are all the characteristics of planning and uh, what, are, what is the purpose of planning each and every we have to do. So, what is the steps for a plan? We are going to discuss that. Step one, to establish the objectives which are verifiable. That is the first one. Step two, to establish planning premises. Third one, to determine alternative course of action. Step four, to evaluate the alternative and select the best. The alternative you are choosing for your plan, no, that, is, that should be best, just like that you can choose. Step five, to formulate the derivative plans. Step six, to secure cooperation and participation of all the employees. Step seven, uh, to measure and control the progress through follow-up. Follow-up is very, very important. So these are all the seven steps we have in planning. We'll see one by one. What I told you regarding step one, to establish the objective, which are very fireable. Okay. First, identify the goal of the organization. Okay. So in order to perform the step one, that is to establish the objective, which are very fireable, you have to identify the goal of the organization. So internal and external environmental rules and regulations. What is meant by internal and external and external environmental rules and regulations? Internal rules and regulation means financial position of the company, human resources available, manufacturing facility, uh, company image. Those kind of things will be coming under the category of internal uh, environment. External environment means government rules and regulations. Uh, socio-economic conditions uh, of the society, competition level, supply and reliability. So both internal and external environment of the organization has to be studied thoroughly. So whenever you are going to perform the step one, you have to identify your goal, then internal and the external uh, environment of the organization has to be studied thoroughly. Step two, what is step two? To establish the planning premises. So planning premises are the assumptions of the future market condition, uh, which become the basis of current planning process. Planning premises, no, there's nothing, but it is an assumption which you are going to think about the future marketing conditions. So planning premises, uh, planning premises usually relate to cost and availability of raw materials, labor, power, product demands, population trends, technology growth, government policies. The second thing, you have to establish your planning premises. Planning premises are that it is nothing but the assumption which you are going to handle for the future market. And also the planning premises usually relate to the cost, availability of raw materials, labor, power, product demands, population trends, technology growth, government policies. Okay, so you must have a concern about the planning premises and you must have a knowledge about that. Step three. Step three is to determine the alternative course of action. What is the alternative course of action? Search and list all possible alternatives in order to combat it analytically evaluated. That is, you are, you are doing your planning process. Uh, by the way, that is side by side, you'll be having your alternatives also. Just like that, you cannot frame your alternative that alternative must be compared and that must be analytically evaluated. What is step four? To evaluate the alternatives and select the best. Simply speaking, uh, you'll be having some four alternative plan means. You must, uh, for example, if any, you have some five plans, you are performing the plan one, but plan one is failed. So remaining four alternatives are there. For that particular current situation, either the second plan can be chosen, third plan can be chosen, fourth one can be chosen, fifth one can be chosen. You must 
uh, evaluate the current situation properly and you have to select the best. So that is your step four. Select, you have to select the most suitable and the best course of action. Alternatives have to be compared and evaluated with respect to the expected contribution to the organizational goals. That is the alternative which you are choosing now that must be expected to the contribution of organizational goals. The evaluation and selection is often done with the help of quantitative technique and operation research. So, just I told you now, I told you know, you have to uh, find the best alternative by using an analytical way. That analytical way is nothing but you can go for the quantitative techniques or else you can go for what? You can go for operational research. That is simply shortly it is called as O on. Next step, next one is step five. Step five is nothing but to formulate the derivative plans. Okay. So uh, what is meant by, uh, what is that derivative plan? So listen students, management has to formulate the derivative plans. Derivative plans is also called as secondary plans. Why we have to, why, why we must have a secondary plan? In order to support the basic plan. I can say it is a basic plan or primary plan. In order to support your primary primary plan, you must have a secondary plan. So derivative plans or the sub plans or I can say it is a departmental plan. For example, uh, if the production plan of Tata Motors is to produce the millions of nanos in the next five years, the derivative plan would be, <coughs> would be the plans for various departments like uh, fabrication, for, for forging, casting, Purchase assembly, etc. I'll repeat. If the production plan of Tata Motors is to produce a millions of nanos in the next five years, the derivative plans would be the plans for various departments like fabrication, forging, casting, purchase assembly, etc. So, uh, so the step five is to formulate the derivative plans. Step number six. Step number six is. To secure cooperation and participation of all the employees. That is step number six. Okay. So involving the employees in planning process enhances their cooperation and participation. So just like that, you, uh, just like that, you alone can't frame a planning and just like that, you alone uh, can't execute that. So the coordination and cooperation of each and every individual, every individual means every individual in the company is very, very important. Material suggestion, compliance, and criticism must be solicited from employees. So we must, if we are the uh, managers, we must hear the words from the uh, suggestions or compliance or criticism from the employees also. That must be considered. Next one is step number seven. The step number seven is to measure and control the progress through follow up. Okay, which is uh, that is. To measure and control the progress through follow-up. Just like that framing a planning is not at all enough. Once you executed, you must follow up that. You must follow up the plan. Then only you can know either the following, either the plan is uh, moving smoothly or any issues you are facing. The follow-up is very, very important. So totally seven plans or I can say seven steps we have in order to perform the proper planning in order to achieve your goals. So as of now, we have completed the characteristic, purpose, and steps involved in planning. Uh, thank you so much for your cooperation. Uh, meet you in the uh, next video. Thank you so much.